You know, as more time goes past, I keep thinking we must just be a very good football team. Hi there, folks, and welcome to Season 2, Episode 3 of Let's Go Hammers. I'm Stuart Bowe. Thank you very much for joining me in this episode where we are going to be playing Southampton and Real Madrid. I know I said I'd come back for the Red Star game, but I've decided to just try and get through a little bit quicker. So instead of doing Red Star in a Premier League game, we're going to do Southampton and Real Madrid. Finish the Champions League group off so we can just plough through the Winter World Cup and get back to the season. If that sounds like a plan to you, please leave a like on the video and consider subscribing to the channel as well for more Football Manager awesomeness. Since you were last with me, we've, we've been very good. <laughs> we've just been very, very good. I think we were last uh, last with you at the Lyon game, I believe. Um, it's been a few days since I've uh, played the save, so bear with me. Yeah, I think it was Lyon. So we played a bunch of games since then. Uh, we've won all but one, uh, which was unfortunately the derby against Tottenham at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. That's absolutely fine. We've got a chance to get them back at the uh, the business end of the season. So that's not really much of a problem. Uh, but yeah, we lost 2-1 that game. But other than that, and the Aston Villa game, which we needed to go to penalties for in the Carabao Cup fourth round, we've been very good. We even beat Real Madrid. I don't fully understand how. But we beat Real Madrid. And as you can see, we were the better team by far. And I still don't fully understand it. We scored first. They equalised. I I just assumed that we were just not going to get back into the game. Uh, but then Julian Alvarez scored. And we didn't look like we were at any kind of risk at that point. So that was good for us. Uh, but yeah, as you can see, we've won a lot of other games as well, including Norwich and Red Star, 5-0, 6-0 respectively. Jared Bowen scoring a hat-trick. He has been a different player this season, and I don't understand why. Um, and also, as you can see, Thiago Armada has started to come good as well, scoring a few goals. Most of them have been penalties, um, but he has started scoring, he has started assisting. A lot of his stuff has been from set pieces, which is good because it means we don't have to rely on Aaron Cresswell and Ianis Hadji. Ianis Hadji, by the way, has just signed a new contract. He started to come good this season. It took a little while to get going, but he is starting to perform. Aaron Cresswell really hasn't. He's really starting to look <laughs> look his age. He's 32, Stuart. He's one year older than you. Um, but he's still not looking very good. As you can see, his physicals are plummeting down. I do think we'll be upgrading him next season. We've already got a left back. I've just thought we signed one, didn't we, who's coming in next season. So we've already sorted that issue out. But enough of that nonsense. We're going to get to the Southampton game and we're hopefully going to get another win. By the way, we're currently third in the table. And if we win the game in hand we've got over the teams above us, we'll be top. So with that in mind, this is the team that we're going to take to St. Mary's. It's Lafont in goal, Maffeo, Diop, Zuma and Lodi in defence. Sushek and Rice in midfield with Bowen, Almada and Madueke in the attacking midfield positions behind Alvarez. Let's get to it. Let's try and beat Southampton. Let's go. I do think it's fair to say at this point that we are just a very good football team. Um, to be fair, we've got the best coaching staff we've been able to hire. We've upgraded all the facilities as much as we can. I don't know whether I've talked about it before, but I do my own training as well. And I do think that makes a big difference if you do your own training in FM, if you understand how to do certain parts of it. We're getting absolutely bodied by Southampton so far, which is not good. Um, Lodi has possibly suffered a cut hands, but we should be able to nurse him through the rest of the match. If Renan Lodi is playing football with his hands, I don't think he understands how the game works, if I'm being completely honest with you. We're not changing him. He's staying on the bloody pitch for that. Uh bit of a wild cross in there but Bowen gets on the end of it Bowen looking to find an outlet gets to Sushek over to Maffeo Maffeo going to be looking for options here gets it back to Sushek Sushek into Jared Bowen and Jared Bowen continues his fine run of form it's his 11th of the season it's 1-0 to West Ham that'll do that'll do nicely what a nice goal I think it's our first attempt of the game as well Sushek gets it out to Maffeo Maffeo Gets it back to Sushek. Sushek spots the run. There is a man behind Bowen as well if Bowen didn't make the run. In fact, there was three men in the box who could have got on the end of that. So I think we were good to go there, which is very, very nice to see. 1-0 to us. Southampton started a lot brighter than we did, but we have got the goal. Um, now we just have to stop Southampton from scoring. Stuart Armstrong has got a very good record of scoring against us. I think, actually, Stuart Armstrong scores against most of my FM teams, even from last year and even in FM20. I recall him scoring against me a lot, and I don't care much for it, if I'm honest with you. Um, what a ball that is from James Ward-Prowse, and it's going to be Che Adams, to put it wise. We do need to be careful of James Ward-Prowse. Uh, yeah, the goal was our only shot. 
that's not ideal. I'm going to demand more from the team because really, other than the goal, this has not been a good performance. We've just shot up in shots, by the way. As soon as I've said that, we have responded and it's a beautiful thing to see. We're still behind on XG, which is hilarious to me. But none of that matters. What matters is... Maybe we go... I was just going to try and time that right. What matters is we're going in at half-time, 1-0 ahead. I was really worried I'd say it, and then it wouldn't end up happening. We really need to try and do something a bit better here. I'm going to say I don't like what I saw. Um, let's try and take control of the game in the midfield a little bit more. I know it might seem like fiddling for fiddling's sake, but we have changed our shape. We've gone to the three in midfield. Uh, Sushek's gone over to this side as well. The reason we've done that is because on that side... He has got James Ward-Prowse, and he is going to be marking James Ward-Prowse because I feel like that is where the danger is going to come from. Uh, Ward-Prowse, in fact, is currently their best player on the pitch. So I think that is going to help us out if we can stop him from being able to play his natural game. Uh, we can't chat to him because we've had a chat to people already. Um, let's carry on the game. Let's see if we can uh, take control of it a little bit more, in particular in the midfield area, and uh, and hopefully we can... We can stop them. This is not ideal, though. They've just gone straight over the top. Looking to get the ball into the box. To get it to Diallo. It's no one there really applying pressure. Although, Nez Ward Prowse couldn't do a lot there. And Lafont makes the save, which is a glorious thing to see. We need to be putting a bit more pressure on them as well, though. So, although we've gone defensive in our shape in midfield, we do need to be careful because we still want to try and score another goal. We don't want to just set up a 1-0. But the way we were playing, the chances we were giving up, I was a little bit concerned. So... I'm hoping this doesn't come back to bite us and I've made a bit of a tactical faux pas here. I'm really hoping that we can actually... I mean, actually, at the moment, they seem to be on the ball a lot more than we are, which is a bit frustrating. If we can get the ball off of them here, that would be ideal. Uh, Walker-Peters gets to Ward-Prowse. Ward-Prowse is marked and he does have to go all the way back to Diallo, but he does do that. And they get to come from the other side and it's off the cross... Was it off the crossbar or the post? One of the two, the frame of the goal, which is really not ideal. Sorry about that. I just had to really clear my throat then and it was not waiting until I could get to a better point. Um, we're still 1-0 ahead. We have got a corner. Jared Bowen, hopefully he can get this on the head of someone. And Kazuma just puts it over. That would have taken a lot of pressure off of us in this second half. I think we are going to change things up in a minute. Um, and I don't quite know what the change will be. I think Armada will probably take off and we'll put someone else in the midfield. Madaweke is injured, which is not ideal. What a ball that is to Jared Bowen. Jared Bowen has the chance to make it too, but he fluffs his lines. And it is still 1-0. We have got the throw-in on the right-hand side, though. Maffeo, Almada. It comes to Bowen. Bowen, looking for Diop. Can't quite get there. Gets to Bowen. Declan Rice goes for the worldie. And I thought it was tipped over. Apparently, it wasn't. It is a goal kick. So, we've had a few chances, which is very good to see. We are going to pause the game. We are going to make a couple of changes. Uh, Almada and Alvarez are having a very poor game. So, we're actually going to bring Grilich on. Okay, those are the changes we're going to make. We've brought Grilich on in the midfield. We're going to bring Hadji on on the left wing and Gawiri on up front. Um, that's mainly just to take off the players who weren't playing well and the player who was injured as well. Hopefully, we can see out the game with that. Um, Southampton, I've been a lot better than 15th place in this game, I have to say. Um, but, I mean, they're at their place. They've got home advantage. I don't know whether changing the formation was the right thing to do. I don't know if we'd have carried on. We'd have maybe snuck another goal in and we would have taken control of the game. But I feel like being a bit more defensively responsible is never a bad thing. Um, and hopefully, hopefully we're going to see the game out here. McCarthy's taking a while on this goal kick. Just waiting to see where we can get the ball out. Completely makes a hash of it. Gets it to Maffeo. Maffeo now to Bowen. Bowen looking for someone to make the run. In the end, Maffeo is the one who gets it to Bowen who's made the run. Bowen whips it in. Can't quite find a player. And it has now got to Southampton players. Adam Armstrong can't get past Kurt Zuma. Nicely done. Hadji now. Grilich. Sushek into Gawiri. Gawiri's been forced wide. Gets it to Jared Bowen. Bowen now going to try and hold the ball up. Get it onto his left and put a cross in. He does. And Gawiri's there. And Gawiri does make it 2-0. Amine Gawiri, I didn't mention it before, but he has been something of a super sub for us. He's come into games, he's scored goals. When we've had to rotate Alvarez out because of poor form, he scored as well. Alvarez not having a great run at the moment, actually. We need to have a chat with him because he's not scored in a few games. But Gawiri taps home at the near post. McCarthy should really do better there. But we don't care because it's 2-0. We've held on. 
from Southampton's onslaught. To be fair, they've been very wasteful. A lot of their shots have been off target. But we have got the second goal, which is what we wanted. And I do think we're going to get three points from this game, which is exactly what we wanted. I don't know whether it will be enough to put us top of the table, which is still weird for me to say. Kawiri's in again here. Kawiri might get a second. He might get a third for us. He just puts it wide. He tried near post again. But this time, Alex McCarthy didn't leave a gap big enough for it. Um, but yeah, I think... Uh, I don't know whether it is. I, I mean, I had a chance to look at the table and then I didn't. But the most important thing is, despite the fact that we were outshotted and out XG'd, we've come away with the win, which is a lovely, lovely thing indeed. Uh, we're going to say that one. I was a bit disappointed with that one, if I'm honest with you. A little bit disappointed indeed. We need to have a chat with Alvarez as well. Uh, as it stands, we're seconds. That's pretty cool. Liverpool do have a game in hand on us. So I take that with a pinch of salt. But we still have a game in hand on Manchester United. So if Liverpool win that game, they go to 30th. So, no, we won't go top of the table, actually. I don't know why I thought we might go top of the table if we win all of our games in hand. We won't. Because um, Liverpool have a game in hand on us and Manchester United. So that's absolutely fine. That's okay. So we're going to play the last couple of games before the Real Madrid game. I'll see you in a moment. And just like that, here we are after those two games, back for the Real Madrid game. Uh, since the last game that you saw, we have played against Leon and Leicester. We drew against Leon, a 95th minute equaliser from Thomas Suchek with all of the drama. And then we had this game against Leicester where we absolutely smashed them 5-0. Uh, it actually could have and potentially should have been more because, as you'll see on this screen, we had three disallowed goals. What was going on in this game? I do not know. But we were the better team by far and away. We were only 1-0 up in uh, the first half. And the second half is where we turned on the style. Had you having a great game. Really no overall poor performances. It was really nice to see uh, Guiribi getting a goal from a start as well. Um, not even getting a goal. He got an assist, didn't he? Why did I think he got a goal? Because I saw the little football there. And I assume that meant he scored a goal. He didn't score a goal. But he got an assist. And Madueke getting a goal and an assist as well. He could have had two goals, actually. But it was a very good performance from the lads. Very happy with that. Which means we are now back. If I can get back to us. There we go. For the Real Madrid game. Um, this is the 11 that we're going to be taking to... Well, not to the Bernabeu. Because that was the first game. We're going to be taking to London Stadium. One day I'm going to get that right. Uh, but this is the 11. It's going to be Lafonso in goal, Maffeo, Diop, Zuma and Lodi in defence. Palacios and Rice in midfield with Bowen, Almada and Madueke supporting Alvarez up front. We're giving Alvarez another chance in this game. Um, he's no longer our top goal scorer for the season. He's had a poor run recently. But we're hoping he can get back into form and score a goal against Real Madrid today. That would be lovely. Um, at the moment, we've got an injury to Thomas Suchek as well. It's not a serious one. Uh, just gashed his legs, so he's out of this game. But uh, we were going to think about rotating the 11. But I want to finish this part of the season on the high. Because we've got one more game after this. And then it's the break for the Winter World Cup. So I want to finish this on a high. We've already qualified for the Champions League knockout round. So this really is just a bit of a kind of a final farewell to the group stage so we'll see what happens but hopefully we can get another win against a really good team let's go you've already seen our 11 at our bench as well Real Madrid have come into this game as we were thinking of doing but didn't do they have rotated quite heavily as you can see Camavinga, Kubo players who maybe you wouldn't expect to be in their starting 11 for a Champions League game. As you can see, confirmation there that we have qualified. I think Madrid, unless there's a massive goal swing today and Leon score loads of goals and we absolutely bat around Madrid, I think Leon are through as well, looking at that group. Um, so all they will be looking to do is to consolidate what they've got in this game. They're not going to be worried about having to smash us. They just want to make sure they get through. Similar to us, we don't need to do anything crazy in this game. If we lose, it's not the end of the world. If anything, if we lose today, it's the perfect time to do it because we've only got one more game before that break and having that break will kind of nullify any kind of bad match that we'll have. Conversely, it might also mean that if we have a really good game today... All of the positive momentum that we have built up in this half of the season will kind of be nullified as well because we're going to have a massive break for the majority of November and December where we're not going to be playing any competitive football. I have put a bunch of friendlies in um, just to keep us as match fit as possible or keep the players who won't be going to the World Cup as match fit as possible. So we will be hopefully 
seeing those players um, who are at the World Cup continue the momentum they've had in the team. I'm really hoping for Jared Bowen to get called up to the World Cup because he has had an exceptional half to the season. He has not had an England call-up yet. So if he does get called up, what a madness that would be. He's never played a game for England before and he gets called up for the World Cup, but it could happen. Gareth Southgate has been spotted at the London Stadium. He has watched Bowen a few times along with other players. For example, Alvarez is in and he had the perfect chance to put himself back into the form that he was at the beginning of the season and at half of last season, but he could not go around looning. Ball's in, Jared Bowen's there, and Jared Bowen, however, has done that in the last Champions League game before the mid-season break. Jared Bowen makes it 1-0 to West Ham against Real Madrid at the London Stadium. What a man this has been this season. Maffeo gets it to Palacios, Palacios into Bowen, and Bowen, that's a lovely goal. That's a lovely little finish, Jared Bowen. What a, yeah, what a man he is. Alvarez had the opportunity, didn't take it. Bowen is taking his chances at the moment, and that's the difference. Um, fortunately, we, although our striker isn't playing the best he could be, we've got someone in the team who's scoring the goals, and it is that man on the right wing. Right, Vinicius Jr. for Real Madrid. Just trying to dribble his way through. He nearly did as well. And Lafont didn't have to save it, but he did have to be aware. He had to be very aware. Uh, Leon, I think, are still nil-nil at the moment. That disappeared before I could see it, but... Again, we are not too worried about anything. It's more about who goes through in our group. Again, I'm pretty convinced Real Madrid are the team who are going to be going through. Unless we spank Real Madrid and Real and uh, Leon spank Red Star. Although Red Star have just actually gone ahead. So Red Star at the moment winning against Leon. It's not enough to put Red Star into the Europa League at the moment. That is still going to be uh, Leon, But... It looks like Real Madrid don't really have to worry too much because, as it stands, they're going to be going through regardless uh, unless Leon have a massive turnaround and win 5-1 or something daft like that. Right, Bowen out to Maffeo. Maffeo looking to whip the ball in, I'm sure. Is he going to cut it back to Bowen? He cuts it back to Bowen. Bowen whips it in. Looks for Alvarez, but Armada is there to mop up. I don't know whether this is going to be allowed. I'm resisting the urge to click the drop down where the team score is to see whether the assist... Uh, the assist provider is there because that is always a giveaway uh but it has been given and Thiago Armada has his goal Julian Alvarez technically has the assist I'll take a goal contribution from him it wasn't necessarily a an intentional one he shot it against the player's legs ball rebounded to Armada I'll take what I can get with Alvarez at the moment if you can have a good game in the first half maybe he'll get a goal in the second but we have been all over this Real Madrid team. Again, take it with a pinch of salt. This is definitely a second string Real Madrid side. We are playing a very strong 11. But I'll take a win over Real Madrid however I can get it. I don't care whether it's their second team. I don't care whether it's got some rotated players. We've still got a couple of rotated players. You know, we've got Palacios in the midfield. That's really the only one if I'm looking. Alvarez is in here. Can he score? He's tried to go around the keeper. He's tried to do a bit too much. He's trying to force it a little bit, Julian Alvarez. And I don't blame him, to be honest with you. I've been on his back. I'm sure the fans will have probably been on his back. It's all meant with love, Julian. It's all meant with love, mate. You know you can put the ball in the back of the net. Right, Maffeo gets to Armada. Armada, back to Maffeo. Palacios gets it all the way back to Issa Diop. Diop, over to Maffeo. Palacios again. Into Bowen. Bowen. Madueke. Madueke. Gets it into Ranan Lodi. Lodi. Is he going to go across? He is. And Julian Alvarez has his goal. Finally. Julian Alvarez has scored. I say finally. It's been about five or six games. It's not been that long. But still, it's felt longer than it has been. And it's good to see him back on the score sheet in front of the home fans. And he does it against Real Madrid. Ranan Lodi does great work on that left-hand side. Gets it into the box. And Alvarez cannot miss from there. No offsides to worry about, no fouls to worry about, no handballs to worry about. All we need to worry about is the fact that we are three goals ahead at Real Madrid. I say at Real Madrid, it's at our stadium. I don't know why I keep saying that. Stu, learn your words. Uh, I think it's substitute o'clock. We're going to bring Madueke off. He's played really well today, uh, although his ratings dropped down, actually, but he has had a good game. We're going to bring Alvarado on. And we'll leave it there for now. Um, I think Chris Meffin will come on for the last few minutes as well. But we'll leave that as the only change for now. We'll make two more in the 75th to 80th minute. Somewhere in that region. Somewhere around now. Why not? I just had a quick check. Leon are still losing. So they, do, they did have a chance to get into the knockout rounds. 
with the way that we've played against Real Madrid, and they have not taken it. Uh, we're going to rest Kurt Zuma. Chris Metham's going to come on for the final bit of the game, and then one more change. Uh, Thiago Armada, we'll give him a... No, in fact, Jared Bowen. Let's give Jared Bowen a rest. We'll bring on... We'll bring on Amine Guiri, and we'll put Guiri out wide, and we'll do that. Yeah, that works for me. Lovely stuff. That works beautifully. And let's just see the game out. Let's see if we can get a cheeky fourth, but... At the end of the day, we've done everything we needed to do. We've topped the group, which staggers me. I thought we this would be not quite a group of death because of Red Star, but it wasn't far off a group of death. We had two very, very good teams. And as it turns out, we have... Oh, what a goal that is from Casemiro. I mean, fair, fair play where it is due. We're probably a little bit uh, complacent there. Probably a little bit complacent. I'm just going to tell the lads to focus. Shouldn't be conceding a sloppy goal like that. They've gone 4-4-2, which is how we stuffed them in the first game. I say stuffed them. It's how we beat them 1-0 in the first game. 1-0? Uh, was it 1-0? No, it's 2-1. Beaten 2-1 in the first game. I can't talk. I should just not say words. Uh, Palacios into Alvarez. Is he going to get a second of the game? Oh, he went for the cheeky little chip. He's got a bit of confidence back. Goes back to Renan Lodi. Lodi's going to try and whip it in. He gets it in. Gawiri's there. And Gawiri has made it 4-1. And it's Amine Gawiri, the super sub again. We're just a very good football team. A very good football team. And I know we've added quite a few players, but there's still a number of players at the club who were here before we arrived. I'm looking at the team, actually. There's only two or three, <laughs> um, um, including on the bench, probably. But we've added to the team where we've needed to. We've made the team a, a stronger unit. There's a lot more depth, and we can do that against the Real Madrid team. And I mean, I know I said that they're a rotated team, but they've still got... Jovic, jo Jovic, they've still got Jovic, they've still got Vinicius Jr., they've still got Casemiro, Rodrigo's in there, Carver Hart, Edo Militao, David Alaba's at left back, they've got Kamavinga in the team as well, and I know he's one of the youngsters, can't actually see their subs, that's a little bit frustrating, but they've got a really good team, even in their second string, and we've been able to go out there and batter them. And we have actually battered them. We've had better possession. We've had more chances. We've had more chances on target. The XG is ridiculous compared to theirs. I'm really impressed with this team. I, I, I keep saying that I'm expecting the bubble to burst because we're not as good as we're playing. But we must be. Because it's the second season in a row where if I can get us to the, to the form table... Not the form table, the schedule, that's what you want. We can do this, not just for this season, but for last season as well. It's exactly the same run of form. I think we're getting beyond the point where it's just us being plucky old West Ham who's getting lucky with games. We're battering teams by three, four, five goals every now and then. And other games we're either scraping through or we're beating teams comfortably 2 or 3 nil. We're a good football team. We're a very good football team. Right. We are going to be back. Do we come back for Liverpool or do we come back for Chelsea? I think we come back for Chelsea. And we come back for that FA Cup third round game as well. We'll play those two. And then after that, we'll play through and come back in February at some point. By that point, the Champions League group games will have been drawn as well. So we can worry about that. But I think that's been a very successful episode. I think it's been a very successful first half of the season. Just a little bit of confirmation. Just that is how the group is going to end up. So we finished top. Five wins from six. One draw. We've scored 18. We've only conceded four. We have been pretty spectacular, if I'm being completely honest with you. Just quickly show you the Premier League as well, uh, just before we wrap up. We've obviously got one more game to play before the break. But just to show you where we are at the moment, we're second in the league. Got a game in hand on the top. And because Liverpool actually lost against Manchester United in the last Premier League game, if we win our game in hands... We can go top of the league. It's going to leave you with that thought right there. Thank you very much for watching. If you've enjoyed this mentioned earlier, please do leave a like on the video. Consider subscribing to the channel. Share this video with your friends and family. Anyone who you think will like Football Manager content. And I will see you in the next episode where we'll talk through some of the World Cup and then hopefully we won't get battered by Chelsea. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye for now.